Good morning. Good to see each of you here this morning. Um, this morning we have uh, pivoted a little bit. We've adjusted what we were going to do. We were going to have um, a young lady, um, Isabetta, with Chosen People Ministries. And uh, we have adjusted a little bit. And I'll talk a little bit at the end of the service about that and where we are. This morning our desire, uh, my intention and purpose of what we're going to do this morning is first worship. We want to worship. We want to worship the one true living God because he's worthy of all of our worship. And we want to pray. We live in a day and a time where we see the evidence of sin and the results of sin and the road that it leads us to. And we continue to see people outside in the world dabbling and struggling with sin, which they're enchained to. They haven't been redeemed. For those of us who know Christ, who have claimed Christ as our Savior and as our Lord, as we seek to follow him, God doesn't want us dabbling in sin. He wants us to turn from sin. And yet, we know that we're still sinners, even when we've accepted Jesus as our Savior. That sin doesn't magically go away. The, the, the desire for sin doesn't just magically go away. We still wrestle with that. We wrestle with the flesh. We wrestle in this age, in this time where we sit and where we stand. And that's why we need prayer. And I've asked 13 men if they would help lead us in prayer for our church, for us, that we would seek the Lord, that we would be uh, in his word, that we would spend time with him, and that ultimately it's my prayer that God's word would be our authority, not our culture, not what we've heard from the history or the past, but ultimately that God's word would be the authority of how we live and how we pursue the Lord. That's how we live our lives. And so uh, I just ask that you would participate with us. This isn't uh, entertainment. This isn't just where you sit back as an audience and there's, there's uh, players up front. We come to worship together today. And, and we come and we pray together. And so I encourage you, Please worship with us, participate together. Ask God to, to do a work in your heart to draw you closer to him. So if you would, would you stand with me and let's begin this morning with a time of prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are a good and gracious God. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us now to gather in this place to worship you. Paul says in Romans 12, 12, that we rejoice in hope, that we're patient in tribulation, and that we're to be constantly in prayer. And so, Lord, today we want to we do that. We want to rejoice in the hope that we have that's found in Jesus Christ that we can praise you, that we can lift up our voices and our hearts in joy and adoration, knowing it is because of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection that gives us life. We come to you asking that you would come, that you would be pleased, that you would be honored, that you would be high and lifted up today. That it wouldn't be about anyone who stands on this stage or even who sits in these seats or who's listening at home. Lord, that our worship would be focused on you. That our prayers would be heard by you. Lord, we need you. We need you every hour. We need you every day. So bless our time. We love you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Children, you are dismissed for Children's Church at this time. Have fun with your class. The rest of you, would you please join me as we, as we uh, all pray for our church this morning. Lord, we come to you right now and just lift you up and give you praise for who you are. Lord, you are almighty all-powerful, all-knowing, 
and in control. And so we give you thanks for that, Lord, as we can trust in you and whatever comes our way. We can lean on you whatever comes our way. Lord, as our church, Lord, I just pray for unity. Lord, we are a family of sinners. And Lord, as we as we interact, as we are here lifting you up and praising you, we are not perfect. And so I pray that we would we would follow your example, Lord, of forgiveness, Lord, of of uh, putting each other first, Lord, of putting you first ultimately, and Lord, have that unity amongst us. Lord, I pray as a church that we would be a light to others out there, Lord, that as we go throughout the week, that our example would be shining around everywhere, that they would know that something is different about us or because of you, because of you in us. Lord, I pray that we would put you first in everything that we do around here. Lord, I thank you for the gifts that you give us, Lord, the, the things that we're able to do because of you. And Lord, as, as a church, I pray that we would use those for you. Lord, that we would again do things for you and, and put that first. Lord, as I've said this whole time, I pray that as a church, you would be the focus of our lives and as a family here. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Father, as we gather here this day, we praise you for who you are and what you've done for us. And let each heart accept the gift that Jesus has given us. And as a result of accepting that gift, may each of us realize that what we owe you can't be quantified. It can't be stacked up against anything else. This world itself cannot compare to what you've done for us. Because this world then becomes just a stepping stone. This world is not our home. It's not everything to us. We seem a lot of the time to listen to this world. And everything is here and now. We have to have this. Do this. Do that. And we know from your word that this is just a place we're passing through. Help us, Lord, to understand better the enormity of the gift that you've given us in Jesus Christ and help us in each of our lives. Everyone is different. Every one of us you have a purpose for. Help us to realize that purpose. Help us to seriously undertake serving you in gratitude for what Jesus has done for us that others may look at us and see you in us. It was said at one time, there are no unimportant parts. And let us remember that every one of us is precious to you, whether we're rich and famous or poor. And no one seemingly, seemingly knows us. But we never know what little thing we might do at some time partly unseen, or we think it's unseen, that's noticed by someone in this world, and we never know what we do or say or not do, what it might mean to some other person who may be lost and see a spark of you in us. Guide our lives, Lord. Help us to accept that responsibility for your gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, words cannot express or even come close to expressing your greatness. You're the I am. You were, you are, and you will be. There'll never be a time without you. 
Father, we just want to focus right now, at least I want to focus on who you are, your greatness, your love, your beauty. I don't understand your love. I can read about it. I can experience it, but I can't really understand it. Why you would choose to save a sinner like me. For it's only by your grace that I'm saved. Father, help each one of us catch a better vi vision of who you are and your love for each one of us. Help us to express that love throughout the world. Let others see a spark in us, the way you've watched over us, the way you've cared for us, the way you've blessed us in ways we don't even know, ways we don't deserve. We'll never deserve your love. Father, I just pray that each one here would be, would be a, a lighthouse to the world we live in, the world that seems right now to be just upside down. Good is no longer considered to be right. Seems like evil's all around us. Things don't make sense. Father, I just pray that each one of us would take a stand and stand for you in what is right. And what we do should be based on your word, not on what we think we should do, but on what you would have us to do. And Father, I just ask you to just bless each one who's here Help us to be who you want us to be, to do what you would have us to do. Father, I pray all these things through the blood of your Son, the Messiah. Dear God, thank you uh, just that you'd even take notice of us as humans and because you're so much higher, so much greater and righteous and uh, thank you that you loved us even though we're humans and we're, we've done you wrong. That's so special and so like undeserving and thank you for that. And God, would you help us to, uh, as a people, seek after you with our whole heart? That'd be a genuine like desire to follow you and that would be a people after your own heart like you talked about, David, and that... Uh, our heart would seek to live in a way that honors you and serves you and that, uh, that every part of our lives would be a life filled as demonstrating who you are because that you are a part of our lives and that uh, our lives would be lived not to serve ourselves but to serve you and uh, help us to dig into who you are so we can learn more of you and live a life that pleases you and that we wouldn't allow the cares of everything going on and the fears of the world and the wars and the rumors and all that, that we wouldn't let those things stray us from our view of who you are and that we would keep our trust and faith in you and we wouldn't put our faith in other things and that, um, that as a result of putting our faith in you and having you in every step of our lives and trying to serve you in every step of our lives, that people would see that there's a difference and that people would be like, we want a part of what makes your life the way it is and that that part would be you and that we would reflect who you are to the world and that there would be a real change because of our lives seeking to serve you and that, uh, that even though you know, we're not worthy of it. You call us your sons and your, your children. Please help us to show that in everything that we do and that you give us the strength to stand when we need to stand and that we would be able to encourage others and build people up and at the same time, show your love, show who you are and show the, what change you've made in our lives and that you are a true God, that you're, you're not something out there, and the, you're not a, a belief that's in the grave. You're, you're alive, and that you have power, and that you really do make change, and that you do have, you do have power, and you have authority, and that you exist, and that you're here today. You're, you're there in the past, and you're in the future, and that people will be able to see that, and believe, and trust in you, and that 
that it would change other people's lives and it, that it, you would continue changing and working in our lives. Amen. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, accepting one another in love, diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. I heard a song this morning for the first time on the way here. It said, I'm not hoping... I'm not wishing, I am praying to the God who listens. I hope you believe that. Let us pray. Father God, in the words of the songwriter, you are God and I am not. And with all things, you are possible. With, all, with you, all things are possible. There isn't a thing that I can lift my finger or my hand to that I can change under my own power, my own influence and knowledge. But you, Lord, hold the answers to all. I pray, Lord, this morning that you would fill us with a spirit of your unity and love. Love for one another. Love for the lost. Love for those that have been deceived and have fallen behind a veil of lies of the great deceiver. I pray, Lord, that you would help us put aside our differences. And, Lord, that we would look to the one true cause, the cause of Christ. That your name would be lifted up. That, Lord, you and only you would be the word upon our lips that we share with one another, whether it be in the spoken word, in the written word, on social media, wherever it may be. Let love be the thing that they see and they hear within us. Father God, I pray that you give us, this church, your wisdom, that you guide us and you lead us, you soften our hearts to hear your voice. You fill us with purpose and a desire and a drive to seek only you and only your truth. Help us to be your people. Help us to be your church. We ask this in the name that is above all names. Jesus Christ, the Messiah the risen one. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the most meaningful prayers in the Bible is the one that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in that prayer, he prayed for his church. In this past year and a half, the church has been under tremendous attack. I believe that there has been a plague that was uh, unleashed upon our world. And it's been greatly used by the enemy of God to hinder his church and his people. We were among the first to come back after we shut down for two years. I mean, two uh, weeks, two months, two months. But many have only begun to get back now. I heard a, a statistic this morning that back in the 60s, there were something like 60-something percent of the people considered themselves to be Christian and church attenders. And that's been increasing by 10, about every 10 years. Until we're down to, it was 40-something percent recently, a couple of years ago. If that same poll were taken today, I believe it would be probably in the 30s. The church has been under attack. Jesus prayed for his church. And that's in John chapter 17. And if you read that, read that chapter, you'll see 
the passion that Jesus has for his church. He gave his life for his church. And the church are the people when they gather together is an expression of that church. Let's pray. Lord, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you lifted up your heart to the Lord, the Father. And when you wrestled with the fact of what you were going to be doing, what it was going to take, your flesh withdrew, it pulled back. Lord, if there be any other way, but there is no other way. And Lord, thou will be done as you have said, thy will be done. But in that prayer, you continue to pray that your church might be protected from the evil one. You did not choose to take us out of this world, but you choose, choose to, to leave us here so that we might be a light and we might be salt, that we might flavor and preserve uh, the culture around us where we live. Lord, forgive us for not letting our light shine the way that we should, about not having that passionless, passionate relationship with you. You prayed that as you and the Father and the Spirit were one, so that when we are in you and you in us, and we are a part of each other, we can have unity and we are one. And in that oneness and unity, there is power, power to strengthen each other, power to let our light shine and reach out to other people and live circumspectly in this world so that we don't take on the markings of the world around us, the culture around us. We pray that you would make your church strong. We pray that you would bring revival to our hearts, that, that, say, that the passion that we need to love the Lord God, our, the Lord our God with all of our hearts, soul, and mind, and, and strength, that we would indeed do that, and that we would fulfill the next commandment, the second greatest commandment, and that is we would love our neighbor as ourself. So Lord, that we might know you, and to know you is eternal life, you prayed in that prayer. We want to know you, in a greater way. We want to be in your word where your, your, your character and your purpose and your plan is revealed unto us and to be together and be taught the word of God so that we might be strong. We can stand firm in the day of trouble and that we won't fall. Lord, bring your church back to life again. Revive us by your spirit. May the wind of the Holy Spirit breathe over us. May the rains of revival come from heaven upon your church, O oh God, and restore that which has been stolen from us by the enemy. Restore it to us, O oh God. Bring new power and new strength. We trust in you. We thank you for praying that prayer for us. And now you're seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for each one of us. We dare not let our foot stumble. We dare not let our knees buckle or bend, but we stand firm upon that which we know. And the strength that you give us, this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Lord, we come to you this morning humbled uh, by the fact that you have allowed each and every one of us to be here today. We're humbled by the fact that you allowed us to be a part of this ministry that you established here so many years ago in this community. We uh, thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. We have seen so many times in these past years, as we sang a little bit ago, that the impossible is possible for you. We have just witnessed that so many times here, Lord. We want to thank you for the many years of uh, people that have come and gone here, Lord, that have made this ministry strong. We know that you want it to stay established here. We thank you for 
um, what you have given us here, just physically in the grounds and building and, um, and uh, just what you have allowed us to be here. I think of in the grand scheme of things, Lord, in our lives that uh, you would allow us to remain strong, that you would allow us to uh, recognize when Satan is trying to put a foot in the door here and for us to not be intimidated, for us to not back down from that, Lord. We know that you are much bigger than that and we know that you will be with us always with that. And when we think of uh, the grand scheme of our life, Lord, that uh, the years that you've given us here on life is but a, uh, a, a twinkling of an eye compared to eternity, that uh, when we see you, that you would be able to tell each and every one of us that we have done a well done job. Amen. Even though uh, Pastor Ed had already mentioned these verses, I think they're worth repeating. I already had this pulled up, and he mentioned them earlier, but it has to do with uh, Matthew 22, and that is uh, the, the greatest, the most important commandments, and that is that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. And I would just like to thank God for all the uh, programs that we have that, that I think exercises these two great commandments that we have, that, that we show our neighbors and, and, and we show the love we have for, that we have in our neighborhood and that that we're already doing. So let's go ahead and pray. Dearly Father, we just want to thank you that we have the opportunity to, to show this through the programs that we do have and how you've blessed us in giving us the ability through our children's programs, giving us the ability to have the, the carnival in the spring through our Awana program, the children programs that we have on Sunday morning, and then it, even the adult programs through our life groups, how we can reach out to our neighbors. We can invite people and show the love that we have, show your love. And that extends then into our worship service and also extends into our music programs, our choir, how we can show your love and our love through when we sing and then also through our praise band when we're leading the congregation singing and then just the, the worship service, the entire revive service through the singing, through the message. We just thank you that we have the opportunity to do all this. And again, how it's been mentioned that we can have the service here, we can have the service online. We just offer so many opportunities. And we have so many other programs that go on throughout the year and ways we can reach out to the community. We're just so blessed to be able to offer all that. And that ties into the, the, physical, um, the physical place that we have here to come worship and how we were able to uh, remodel and be able to accommodate all the different activities. We've just been blessed in so many ways and we just thank you for that. And we just pray that we can continue as a church here to worship you, to preach your word. And we just pray that the future, we can also continue with missions. We thank you that we can support the ones that we've been supporting. We pray for guidance there. We also pray for the future as far as what you want us to do as a church, that you'll guide us in decisions that we made as far as what direction we'll take as far as what missions to support and what direction in general that we have to take as a church. We just thank you for all these great blessings that we have. We pray that we will continue to preach your word and reach our neighbors and show your love through us and that we can reach out and just be a real blessing to everyone. We pray this in your name.
Let us continue to pray. Father, our God, I stand here today truly in awe of your, your amazing powers, your greatness. I thank you for the love that you continue to show me and each one of us here in this room. Lord, I've seen firsthand the amazing power through my friend, my dear friend, that you've laid your healing hand upon the past several weeks. Lord, his situation was desperate. His family had given up hope. Yet today, he, he's able to talk, to eat, to walk. And it was truly you, Lord, that, uh, that made that possible. And yet, Lord, here I stand. I'm, I'm guilty, Lord, of neglecting you. I don't give you the attention that you deserve. I just pray that you would help me to focus on the things that you've, that I, that you've directed me to do here at this church and outside, Lord. And maybe there's someone, someone else here that struggles with the same thing, that you would touch their hearts, that you would encourage them, give them confidence. If, if you've called them to serve you, that, uh, that they would do that, Lord. I just thank you for the people here that serve Lord, I just pray that you continue to lead and guide them. I pray for our pastors, each one of them, that you would guide, direct them through your word, through the Holy Spirit. Lord, it's truly amazing that you continue to seek me, even though I fall short in a lot of areas. Through your, through your just unending love, I thank you for that. I thank you for this building you've provided. You've provided the, the bricks, the mortar, the wood, the steel. But without these people and without you, most of all, it's just another building, Lord. And I know that it just, it doesn't stop here, Lord, that well beyond these walls, the ministry of West Hill reaches throughout the world. And I just pray that you continue to provide through us that we support those abroad who are working to bring souls to you. Father, again, I just thank you and praise you. I just give you all the praise for what I've seen you do. Love you, Lord, and thank you. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you know us that you know me fully and completely. You know my strengths, you know my weaknesses. You know my abilities. You know where I need a lot of help. And yet, Lord, you love me. You love us. And Father, I thank you for that love. And Lord, the, the prayer I want to share with my brothers and sisters today is one written down a long time ago. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. 
Where there's hatred, let us so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there is discord, let us sow union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, help us to be light. Where there is sadness, your joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It's in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So, Father God, help us to step outside of ourselves today and every day that we truly may be instruments of your peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's continue to pray together. Lord, as we've been studying your love, your joy, and your peace, uh, help us, Lord, to love others as you have truly loved us. And uh, give us the joy on a daily basis, Lord, that you alone can give. You are the one that makes the joy in our lives that we can share with others. And that brings the peace, Lord, that you alone can give. You have given that so freely to your children. We thank you for that. And Lord, I help us to be still and to know that you are God, and that you have a better plan than our plan. Your ways are higher than our ways. Your gifts are greater than ours. And as we look forward, Lord, to your coming, to uh, living uh, in your kingdom, Lord, we're just passing through here and help us to uh, help others along the way. Give us the wisdom, the knowledge that we need in order to spread your good news throughout the world. And we give you the praise. You alone are worthy of all our praise. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this church. Um, I know it's blessed me and so many others. I pray that people don't think of the building when they think of West Hill, but they think of the people and just the way that we serve and love you and love others. I pray that they think of people who love others no matter what the circumstances may be. I pray for our church. I pray that you'd strengthen us and give us the endurance to continue to serve you. That's why we're here, that's why you created us. We were created to serve you, to love you, and to share the great news you've given us. Jesus, you died for us. You know all the wrong we've done, and all the wrong we will continue to do, and yet you still took our punishment. You didn't deserve to die on that cross. That should have been us. You took the beating, pain, and death for those that turn their backs on you every day. You died for those that killed you. Lord, I pray that you humble us today. We don't deserve anything but death, but yet you have given us everything that we need and more. Let us not take advantage of that. 
Let us be humbled by that and motivated to serve you every single day. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you've given us. Even in this dark world, Lord, we can still see the light, and I pray that we continue to focus on that light. The, the world seems to get darker every single day, but where there is darkness, there is light, and that light is you, and we pray all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue our prayer again, we just praise you for who you are and for our salvation. Lord, I, I, I was a pastor and asked if I would, would entertain praying this morning, and I thanked him for that and contemplated what you would lay on my heart, and you know, he pointed me to the, what Paul said in Colossians about, uh, he, in a nutshell, Lord, he just said, Walk. He prayed for the Colossians that they'd walk worthy, that they produce fruit, and that they'd glorify God. And Lord, I pray that that's what we'll do to this day for you. Lord, what a blessing is that we can walk as a son of yours, as a child of yours, Lord. And help us to reflect on what a glorious thing that is. And Lord, the fruit we can produce you know, we've been learning over the last few weeks, and we'll continue to learn that's really the hallmark of what Christianity is about, and producing fruit that glorifies you, Lord. And Lord, again, I, I do pray for the lost. Uh, Lord, that, that is our great commission, is to go out there and pr pray for the gospel. There are so many people today, Lord, that don't know Jesus Christ, and they won't know them unless we tell them. So help us to do that this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul, in his first letter to Timothy, encourages Timothy as he continues to lead and to um, build up the church, the early church, as Timothy was sent by Paul to build up the leaders, to instruct, to give guidance. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, verse 8, I desire then that in every place the men should pray. I just want to thank the men for praying this morning. Um, the gospel is an amazing gift, is it not? The fact that we were left helpless and hopeless. Unfortunately, in our world today, and even in, especially in our Western culture, and I, I reference our Western culture a lot because it's where we are. It's where we live. It's not all bad, um, but, it, but it's not all biblical either. The gospel is Jesus. It's not Jesus plus this. It isn't Jesus plus our works. It isn't Jesus plus anything else. The beauty of the gospel is that Jesus Christ gave his life to restore us in a relationship with our creator, Lord. That's the beauty of the gospel. And if you add anything to Jesus... You take away from that beauty. I tease my girls all the time when they go to put makeup on. I said, why would you paint a rose? And they're like, well, we're just extension eggs making, bringing out its highlights. The gospel doesn't need any highlights. The gospel is Jesus. He is the one who saved us. He is the one who's conquered sin and death. He is the one who lives inside of us, who allows us to live each day. And without him, we are unable to do that. And so we come each Sunday reminded of the gospel and the beauty of the gospel and the need of the gospel. Every single Sunday as we come to worship, the gospel shouldn't be something old and stagnant. It is something beautiful and new and vibrant because we realize once again, left to ourselves, we can do nothing. 
So the Western mindset is you can do something. You can do it. You can do anything. That's not what scripture says. The scripture says that our good deeds are like filthy rags. And if you study that further, and I'm a guy growing up with no sisters, the filthy rags is the menstrual rags. Is it in just, okay, I'm going to wipe my hands from a little bit of dirt. Our good works are like filthy rags. Here, God, here's my good works. And God says, I don't need them. The beauty of the gospel. The reminder that when we come in each Sunday and we gather to worship, the reminder is that we all stand in the same place. There, there is no differential difference between us from one another. We all need the gospel. There isn't one person better than the other. We all stand in the same place, guilty because we're sinners, guilty because there's a condition of our heart that's been passed from Adam down to us. Each one of us are guilty. None of us are perfect. And there should be days where we walk in. And today's one of those days for me where you feel broken. You feel like you haven't done enough. You feel like you've made too many mistakes. That's the beauty of the gospel, though. That's the beauty of our God. And the fact that we are able to come and to confess our sin, to admit that, God, I don't stand up to your perfect standard. And yet, there you are. You would still love me? You'd still have me? I get to be called your child still? Anytime we add to the gospel, we take away from the beauty of it. This is one of the things we see and we saw as we study through the book of Acts and Acts 15 as the, 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 the Jewish council meets together and as they review and look over what this beautiful thing that Jesus has brought to them, they look at this along with the law and they realize that the law is the tutor, the law brings them to their need of the gospel. And so you can't add circumcision. You can't add keeping any part of the law to the gospel. The gospel is believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that Jesus died upon the cross for you and for me, taking our sin, taking the punishment that we deserve because we are disobedient, sinful people, every single one of us. But our world doesn't want to hear that. Our world wants us to believe that we are good people. There is not one who is good. We have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. The rich man comes to Jesus and he, he says, what, what, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus asks him about keeping the law. But before that, there's an interaction. He says, good teacher. And Jesus says, there is none good but one. I think we missed that in, in the story because in, in the heels of that, he says, there is none that are good and that here is this rich man who's going to answer, I've kept the law, I've been good. Jesus already gave him the answer. There is none good. Go and sell your possessions. And he was unable to do that. Why? Folks, we are no different. And so each day that we live here on this earth, we are bombarded over and over again with the wrestling of, do we believe in the gospel? Is it worth giving our life for? No one can make you make that decision. No one can tell you how to live life. I mean, they can. My dad told me a lot of things. I listened to some of it. I wish I would have listened to more. 
No one can force you to believe the gospel. But I will tell you this. If you will take the gospel and the beauty of just the gospel, not adding anything else to it that you have to do in order to have a relationship with God, but you take the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ dying for you, being, being in that, that place that we all deserve, that Jesus took the full wrath of God upon himself, dying in our place, was buried in that he rose again, and you accept that free gift of life eternal through Jesus, and you say, yes, I want that. That that life requires something of us. We don't want to talk about that. We want it to be free. The fact is, it costs us our life. But we get life forever. If we repent from our sin, if we say, Yes, I am a sinner, and I want to turn from that, and I turn to Jesus. I don't turn to doing good things. I don't turn to trying to live a right life. I turn to Jesus. Jesus is the one I keep going back to. Jesus is the heart of the gospel. Jesus is the one. And if you add anything else, you take away the beauty of the gospel. So as we leave this morning here, in closing is. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about even West Hill. It's about Jesus, is it not? How we live our lives, what we do, what I focus on, how I intend to do whatever it is for the rest of this day and tomorrow and the next day. Is it about Jesus? Because the beauty of that is, is even if we make mistakes, and we will, we have, and we will continue. When we make mistakes, when we continue to make Jesus the center, he's the one who makes things right. He's the one who can redeem even in the midst of sin, even in our shortcomings and our failures, Jesus can redeem. Isn't that amazing? Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for the opportunity that you gave us this morning to worship you and to talk with you. The gospel is humbling, Lord. Because it continues to bring us back to realize that there is nothing that we could do to save ourselves. And that we are totally reliant upon you. In our pride and in our arrogance. Sometimes even in our own good desires. Lord, we allow things, people actions, even ministry to hamper and to get in the way of what ultimately will bring you glory. Lord, I stand here as a very imperfect man. A man who desires to honor you, a desires to allow you to lead in my life, in my marriage, in my family, and in this church. Lord, I'm sorry for my failures, for my shortcomings, the times that I lead when I don't seek you. The times when I think I know what's right and yet don't listen to your spirit or to your truth of your word. Lord, I pray for our church, the people who have, you have called by your name to yourself. The people of West Hill who continue to gather week after week, who 
have chosen to gather in this place amongst these people, I pray that we would continue to keep our minds and our hearts fixated upon the gospel, upon the true gospel. Upon the fact that we have nothing that we can bring to you except ourselves. We thank you that you've chosen to use us as your vessels and as your instruments. I pray that you continue to help us to stay humble. That we would seek your face, not others first, that we would seek you and the truth of your word, that you would instruct us, that your spirit would guide us, and that others around us would complement what your word has shown us and told us. We aren't living on islands. There isn't some new theology. Lord, we have the great opportunity to live each day with your word and growing together with one another. Help us to do that. Help us to have a sweet spirit. Help us to be quick to ask for one another's forgiveness. Help us to be quick to admit when we're wrong. Help us to be quick to love each other in very tangible ways. Not through word only, but Lord, through our actions, our voice, our words. May we die to ourselves the way that Jesus died for us so that others may truly see that the gospel is real and it is the power of salvation for all mankind. May your spirit do something in us this day and moving forward. While we want to see something big and magnificent, Lord, my prayer is for something small. That the seed of truth will continue to grow in our hearts. That we will continue to seek you more this day and that that seed will continue to grow. And as we love you more each day, that you would allow us to love others more each day. Lord, it's hard. We see the things of this world and it's hard not to get ensnared and entrapped by them. And Lord, that's why we're here asking for your help. And I pray that it would be our prayer. That it would be our desire. That it would be something we long for. A closer walk with you. May you bless each one as they leave from here. May your spirit be upon them to guide them, to direct them, that they may continue to see your love, that the joy of serving you would manifest out of them, and that the inner part of each of our hearts may be overwhelmed with a great peace. That we would look and see, even if it were all stripped away, even if you were to call all of it away, 
that we would be content. That we would have joy because we would still have Jesus. Help that to be enough for us. Help Jesus to be enough for us today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. God's blessing as you go throughout your week.